You know guys, when I did my first ever review on this channel, Rascal Racers for the PS1, I had loads of people that got to that video before anybody else, but then would leave the video straight away. Why is that? Because they would then leave a comment saying, Ah, I thought this was a game review about Rascal for the PS1. Well, first of all, thanks for reading the title of the video, you dumb shits. But secondly, that made me extremely curious about this game. I mean, apparently it was one of the worst PS1 games ever made, and I had never heard of it. Well, if this game is really that bad, I better prepare. And I gotta say, guys, I'm a person that has never touched alcohol. Well, I haven't touched alcohol since I was 13, anyway. So I don't really know what I was looking for, but I figured I'd prepare with um, some of this. Is this good? Is this good stuff? Well, I guess we'll find out. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kanakura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. Hey, look, it's a game. It's bad. Let's play it. Actually, before we do that, let's just look at this box art. High hopes. I've got high hopes. I've got high apple pie in your eye hopes. This box art is truly worthy of framing and hanging up in the fucking Louvre for future generations to marvel at and glimpsing into the world of the 1990s. In one image, you can just smell the age of a decaying decade reeking off of it. This kid here. This kid is a fossil. This cover truly fascinates me. I'm not even joking here. This is like a time capsule, a gateway into an alien world which rooted up and died quicker than hamsters usually live for. And it's horrendous. The main character designs for every model in this game were actually made by the Jim Henson creature shop. So what the hell happened here? The Dark Crystal. This. The Dark Crystal. This. <laughs> you see what I mean? I haven't even taken a drink yet. I'm already throwing up. <laughs> Either way, I'm sure that everybody's aware of the awful, awful, awful reviews this game received at the time. And because I have evaded this travesty for long enough and thought I got away with it, it's time to finally remove this game from my subconscious once and for all. Yes, I completely admit it. I deliberately avoided this game. But no more! I'm putting my hands up with this one. And I mean that. Literally. Look, my hands are in the air. So that means I can't pick up the controller. And I can't play the game. Huzzah! Ready to play the game now. Wow, I am legitimately lost for words right now. Like, I have nothing. I repeat, nothing to say about this menu. That thing is worse than the moon in Majora's Mask, and it's it's trying to be happy. How does a happy moon look worse than this? I don't know, but Rascal found a way. And after actually playing the game, I can't tell what's worse, that menu screen or the actual damn game itself. I can't even begin to describe how it feels to play this game. The main guy you control in this game has no free movement, and he kind of moves similar to the way Croc moves, you know, picking up momentum and needing to steer left and right instead of just moving the analog stick or D-pad wherever you want the character to go. And yes, Croc is indeed very, very flawed, as I've discussed before, but at least all the levels in that game are wide open and built around that control scheme. But look at this! Every stage in this game is cramped, claustrophobic, hard to navigate, and when you throw other enemies into the mix, you will cry. I mean, I mean look at this! <laughs> I have a feeling that this game is going to be kicking me in the balls with how difficult it is to play. But have no fear, I came prepared for this. Just to grab a little bit of this, give it a shake, spray down here. And there we go. I am now protected. To all of the men in the audience today, there'll be some games that you play in life which are so mind-blowingly difficult or mind-blowingly good that they physically assault your testicles. And that is why I use Cockaway. Cockaway. It gets rid of it. Apply now. And hey, it's a good thing that I did because this game is just unbearable to play. The main objective, as far as I can see, involves jumping into, admittedly, one of the coolest graphical PS1 effects I've ever seen, to then explore some levels that involve defeating enemies and finding every part of an hourglass to then return back home. Rinse and repeat, etc., etc., etc. This sounds simple, yes, but I've already started slagging this game off, so let's continue. The camera in this game 
Oh lord, the camera in this game. You are given two buttons to control the damn thing, yet it just doesn't work at all. Not only because it gets constantly stuck on the walls in the claustrophobic areas, but because it also doesn't work in a free turning left or right way. You can either lower the camera, or you can cycle through preset camera angles. Nothing more than that. And half the time, they don't even work. I'm standing in one place here, and look, I can't figure out how it fucking works. I don't think I have to explain why this is so unbearable. And what's worse is that the tiny corridors and levels often lead to shit hitting you when you can't see it coming. What? That's not fair! Don't you worry. I'll conquer this game yet. For my name isn't James Montgomery Winston Henrietta Charles Elizabeth Terence Margaret Caddick. Who the fuck is Rascal anyway? Is that our main hero? Rascal? Well, why not just call him Scamp? Or Whippersnapper? Let's see what the manual says. Oh lord, there's a full character profile, including a, a report card? A report card written by Dr. MC Squared, Mr. Theosaurus, Mrs. E. Quate of and what do we think about this? The kid here dabbles with a time machine and then tells his metalworks teacher about it and then gives the kid a B minus. A B minus. Stay in school, kids. You'll go far when the teachers take notice of your skills and help you prosper in life and develop those special talents and dexterities. Let's see here. Well, that's his real name, at least. Mm, favorite movie, Men in Black. Favorite TV show, X Files. Favorite spice, Scary. Scary, as in the Spice Girls. A and his top saying is, Call it. I hate this boy. I hate this boy. I hate this boy. I bait this hoy. As far as attacking goes, <laughs> don't make me laugh. You have a bubble gun to shoot your foes, but the fucking thing is close to useless if that surprised you in any way, shape, or form. Do you remember those dicks from school that acted like dicks because they called nerds dicks for the way that they looked, and then years later those dicks started dressing and acting like those people that they used to call dicks? Well, that's what this game is. The enemies all have the same strategy. As soon as you hit them or they see you, you, they just run after you. The exact same pattern with any enemy, no matter what weapon they are holding. And because of this incredible level design, some enemies even get stuck along a train track once you set them off because they can't turn themselves around. What is this? It takes way too many hits to kill anything in this game from big or small enemies alike. And yes, you can find gun power-ups like homing bubbles and more powerful bubbles, but when the goddamn camera is built like this and the areas are so damn small, you have no room to move, no way to control the camera, and no way to see what's actually happening around you, and your adventure is bound to end in seconds because- Just LOOK AT THIS! I can see carrots. Okay, I lied. I can't conquer this game. The level design is unbearable. Not only is it very damn crap, but every area is indistinguishably similar. And even with the in-game map, you get lost and confused far too easily. And in a game about finding things, that isn't fucking good. Oh, goody goody, I got hit again by more stupid shit I couldn't fucking say! I'm at the seaside. The thing with Pascal Sauvage is that it's not exactly a fun game in the slightest, which is a shame because there are hints of a good game sprinkled in here, like a load of happy little flies jumping out of a piece of poo. The game doesn't look so bad, and the music's actually pretty good. Actually, I take that back. This fucking medieval theme is getting on my tits. Try listening to this for minutes upon minutes on end while you run around like a backwards baseball cap jackass, getting lost in every room you exist. Explore. And don't get me started on the water controls. I can't even describe how nauseating they are. I, I'm trying my hardest here, I swear, but it's like there are ice physics under the water. What kind of sense does that make? And how about this boarding section? Woo, it's so stiff. 
and you can't see what's coming around any corner, so you're prepared to lose a lot of health. Oh, what? Enemies appear out of fucking nowhere right out of your field of view? Why is that a thing? I can't even see where they appear or know when they appear. They just come out of fucking nowhere. Oh, and they also can sometimes drop poisonous pickups. Why? What's the point of successfully defeating an enemy for the game to reward you by fucking killing you? And you can't avoid these things because of how small everything is and... <laughs> We regret to inform the beautiful people that Kedicarus is taking a temporary hiatus due to the pure awfulness of this game. He has since stated that he's decided to tackle creepy narration for this channel and hopes you all understand the reasons towards this new direction. Thank you very much everybody and please enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to my new channel, Mr. Caddy Pasta, where I narrate scary stories that are the scariest. And here are my top 10 scariest SCPs to begin this whole thing off. Number 10, SCP-2125, Object Class Euclid. SCP-2125 is an average looking music box. The difference with this music box though, is that it has hyper-realistic eyes. And a moustache. Anyway, when any sentient being decides to turn the crank of this SCP, the song Living on a Prayer by Bon Jon Jon bon, Jon Bon Jovi starts playing. But not in a blinky blonky music box kind of way, no, it actually plays the entire song in realistic CD quality. This would be creepy enough, however if one decides to keep turning the box when the song reaches the key change just before the third chorus, because of how fucking awful that key changes, the music box kills fucking everyone in a three meter radius with lasers! I forgot what I was even doing. Um... Hello everyone! Welcome to my show. Roll the intro. You know, the intro to my show. Yeah, you know, the one, the one that goes... Oh hey, look at Buzz Battle! He's a big smelly goat! He also looks very cute, I, I don't really want to hurt him. I don't really- So the main objective here is to wait for Dragon Falls to breathe fire at you, and then you run behind him and shoot his back. But look at this camera! And the heavy steering controls just make this whole- this whole bit is unplayable! And look how long it takes to beat him! And what do you get for beating him? Nothing! Nothing, a thing, thing, hing, ing, mm, good, nothing! So I have to ask you, rascal, what was the point of the boss battle if there was no reason to fight the boss battle? Hey, look, I found a shitting button. Look, rascal is shitting in the fucking air. He's funny. <laughs> And so, in conclusion, um, Rascal Not Racers is one of the worst playstationable platforms you'll ever see to find. It's a truly terrible game. I mean, not as bad as some games like Bubsy 3D, <laughs> but it's still pretty bad nonetheless. So, I have nothing other to give this game, and it deserves nothing more than the slaughter. <laughs> oh no, I shot myself. Hello there everybody and thanks so much for watching my stupid, one of the dumbest videos I've ever done on the video game Rascal on the PS1. If you enjoyed yourself, then please show that you did by leaving a little like for me, that would help me out a huge amount, and consider subscribing to my channel because I upload two videos every single week. How exciting is that? Well, you know, apart from when I'm ill or on holiday, but other than that, two a week, that's awesome. And if you look in the description, you'll find all my social media links, Facebook, Twitter, my Twitch page because I'm streaming a lot more recently. Um, yeah, so if a video doesn't go up or you want to see the updates, like real time as they happen then follow me on Twitter and Facebook that's where all the updates go and um, you'll also find my games grabber collection down there so if you want to see what games I've been buying what games are on my shelves what games I'm picking up updated on a daily basis then go down click on that little link maybe you could buy some of them yourself as well you can get them straight from the site so that's very nice and um, yes yes as always if it's your birthday today watching this video happy spring birthday to you and please remember to stay beautiful